Oh, hey, friends. Let's talk shop. Now, this video is, I admit, from the very beginning, for the OGs. For the folks who watch and engage with me every week, there's not going to be any fancy building montages set to music this week. There's not going to be any deep salient points about particular techniques that I think are more efficient or more aesthetically pleasing. This is a behind the scenes kind of shop update situation for the folks who want to know what's going on in my shop and how I approach certain things, what happened in 2023 and what's going to happen in 2024 because after all, it's the end of the year and it's a time for reflection. So grab a coffee, cozy up on the couch, sit down in your computer chair, sit on an airplane terminal seat, and look at this on your phone. I don't care where you're at, just be comfortable, and let's enjoy one another's presence for a moment. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore, so let's dive into it. Now, 2023 was an interesting year. A year for experimentation, a year for growth, a year for taking risks. And I know that because you're here. You're here watching this video, engaging with my work on a platform that before 2023 I wasn't really focused on. And I think it's really a wonderful, beautiful thing that you guys are interested in what I'm doing and that you find some value in me articulating my process. I'm, it's something I'm deeply grateful for and I don't want to understate that in any way or not stated at all. I think it's it just it's something that brings me a lot of joy. I enjoy doing what I do and I enjoy articulating what I do and that some folks are taking value out of that. I don't know what else you could want out of life, frankly, but maybe that's the teacher in me. And especially when you consider that sometimes, I admit, I can be a bit long-winded. I can ramble, I can be overly verbose from time to time about my process and my thoughts because I don't really know another way to articulate them. And these are things that I sit with and contend with and think about often is like, at the end of the day, we just make objects. We make furniture, we make things out of dead trees. Is it really of any import? Does the thing matter or am I just making it a bigger deal than it needs to be in order to justify making objects for a living instead of doing something that has a more immediate impact on the world around us, making the world a better place? I don't know. But what I do know is that the encouragement that you guys take from not just my videos, but from watching and learning and doing and creating your own things, I think that really does matter. I think that has an impact on people's lives, brings them joy. What else is there to do with one's life than to help other people find their joy? Maybe that's the philosophy degree in me. I don't know, but those are my thoughts in that vein. What I'm currently working on is a cabinet, a bookcase. I'm doing the joinery and things are kind of misaligned and they're being a little finicky. It's not cooperating. And I bring that up because I think when you are alone in your shop as a hobbyist or as a as an early woodworker, whether you want to go the professional route or no, I think you get discouraged by those things. I think you get frustrated with yourself and think, if only I was better, if only I was more practiced, if only I was more efficient, I could make more things, I could do this more accurately. And the reality is, while that's true to an extent, that's not true across the board. It's not linear. The frustrations of things being misaligned, of making a mistake, of flipping a number in your head and, and misaligning a thing. It's just, that's just the nature of it. That's just human error. And I still do it after 10 years of doing this professionally or whatever it's been. And there are days where you get frustrated and you just set things down and you walk out of the shop and that's a totally fine way to handle that. That's a good way to handle that. But don't think it's because you're not any good at it. It's just because you're human. I'm human, mistakes happen, you figure out a way to fix it, and then you start down that path. So do the best work you're capable of doing in the moment you're doing the thing, and that's all you can really do. So there it is, those are my reflections on the integrity of your work, as it were. And so, with that being said, let's talk about some housekeeping things. So before we look forward, let's look backward. In 2023, a couple of things happened. Number one, and most recently, the t-shirt sales that we were doing for charity from September to Thanksgiving, we were able to raise $983 and every bit of those proceeds went to the Jonathan Katz Moses Woodworkers with Disabilities Fund. 
So that's a wonderful thing that we were able to do for our community to help people make objects and feel that empowerment by making things with their hands. So that's something I'm very grateful for and thank you all who bought t-shirts in order to support that. Maybe that's a thing we do annually, maybe next year we find a different charity. I don't know yet, but for this moment, that I think is a wonderful thing. Now, at the beginning of 2023, I set three goals. Number one, I was gonna make 52 videos. Number two, I was gonna hit 50,000 subs. And number three, and this is a bit more ambiguous, I was going to figure out how to make a good long form video. I've been familiar with short form content for a number of years, but making a long form video, making something in the 10 to 20 minute range where I was commenting and articulating to camera, how do you make a good video? And in what style? I didn't have a voice, I didn't have enough experience. Well, let's go back to front on that. Did I make a good video? I think I made some of the best videos that I was capable of making in the moment I was making the videos. So for example, the video where I make the door pretty early on in the year, it's very clearly a Casey Neistat video, right? Like it takes his visual language, his character, and it just applies it to woodworking. And then there are some other videos where I'm very clearly taking Peter McKinnon and just implementing him in the woodworking space. So I think they're good videos, but they're not videos in my voice, in my style. But again, that's part of the creative process is imitation in order to figure out your own voice. You start singing like somebody else at a young age before your voice changes and you start to sound like yourself. That, in my opinion, is how the creative process works. And then of course, making 52 videos in a year, trying to run a woodworking business, traveling, doing all of the things I did in 2023, it means that some videos weren't as good as others. And that, like, that's the nature of it. Every piece you make can't be the best piece you ever made. That's just not mathematically possible. So I think I learned a lot this year about making videos. Do I think I'm good at it yet? If I'm frank, no. I don't think I'm very good at it. I think I'm okay at it. And I think I'm getting better at it with each subsequent bit of practice. But I hope that I'm better at this in a year than I am now. And I'm certainly better now than I was a year ago. I can tell you that much. And that growth is all I can hope for. So that's goal number one. Goal number two is very tangible. Hit 50,000 subs. I did that in August, I believe. So that was fantastic. And goal number one, make 52 videos. Oh, guys, I was, I was on pace. I was on pace. I'm going to hit 51. Now, I may put up a short and call it 52, just so I can hit that goal. But in fairness, the Super Secret LA project ended up taking away a couple of weeks of work and I was unable to produce videos in that time scale given the work that I was doing. So, such is life, sometimes you have to adjust. But, does a short count? I'm gonna let y'all decide in the comments. Does a short count? Because this video will come out on December 30th and that will leave me a day to make a short and post a 50 second video, so let me know. Now, 2024, what does that look? It's a great question, I'm so glad you asked. Well, I'm gonna stick with setting three goals. I think that's a good thing to do. I think having two of them, like one that's achievable and one that's a little bit of a reach, and then having a creative goal in there, that seemed to work well in 2023, so I'm gonna run it back and see what happens. So goal number one in 2024 is to clear my commission queue. I've reached a point, and this has happened twice over my career so far. I've reached a point where, if I'm honest, I don't wanna do commissions right now. It's not a thing I'm interested in doing and not because of clients, they've all been wonderful to this point. Uh, it's just, I feel like I've refined my skill set in articulating to clients what I'm doing and giving them what they want to a point where that's not intellectually engaging for me anymore. And so I wanna clear out the commission queue so that I can focus again on speculative pieces. Much like I was doing while I was teaching, I had a full-time job that was paying the bills, and then I could focus on creative exploration, expanding my skill set, expanding my, my vocabulary visually. I think all of those things are really important and engaging to me, and I want to do that again. And so, I'm gonna focus on YouTube as kind of my primary teaching platform, right? 
that being the job and then the creative exploration and being able to articulate that as part of the interest in all of this. So that being said, goal number two is gonna be to hit 100,000 subs. Now, subscribers may be a bit arbitrary. It's not like they're a direct correlation between having more subs and being able to sustain a living on this platform. That's not the point. I just know that I do better when I have a particular goal and I can strive toward that goal. So putting out a video every week and trying to hit 100,000 subs, I think is a real good tangible goal for me. And I think it's an achievable goal in 2024. Now, as an aside, I don't know if you guys know Drew Witt, my buddy over at Witworks. Good dude. I would never say that to his face, but good human being. He and I have a friendly competition as to who hits 100,000 subs first. He was ahead, then I pulled ahead. Now he's ahead again. So if there's anything I can ask you for, this holiday season, it's go tell everybody you know to sub to my channel and unsub to his channel. Don't do that, but like do it. Bro, not cool. Because I gotta win. I'm a competitive human being. I wanna beat him just so I can say that I beat him because that's how friendships work. I'm pretty sure that's what being a good friend is. Now my third goal for 2024 is gonna be a bit looser and I haven't nailed it down just yet, but it's, it's gonna be a creative goal of some kind. And I don't know yet whether that's going to be to push myself to work in a vocabulary I'm not yet comfortable with, if it's going to be a bit of simplification, if it's gonna be making smaller objects more readily, or if it's going to be making a couple of larger objects, I don't know. But one of the things I've had on the docket for a while is to design and make a chair. The last time I made a chair was when I was still a student at CFC in the nine month in 2012. So it's been a minute. And if I'm honest, that chair's not very good. It's fine visually, it's okay. It's a little chunky in my opinion, but it's not very comfortable. And so I've had some designs for chairs over the years. I think that could be a fun challenge given that chair design is such a different skill set from object design is it like cabinetry, et cetera, et cetera. There's ergonomics involved, there's stance involved, there's all of these different components. So that could be a fun challenge. It's been a minute since I've made a chair. So that that's, I'm gonna leave that one open for right now, but that is on the ticker as a potential goal for 2024. Now, a couple final housekeeping things for you guys. Number one, I'm very excited to announce that I'm starting a Patreon. So I told you guys earlier that I wanna focus on YouTube as kind of my primary creative drive in 2024. I want to be able to think about how to make better videos, how to tell a more interesting story, how to design projects that are creatively expansive for me, but also articulate those things in ways that are helpful and digestible to you all. And so doing something like, for example, hiring on an editor is going to be a huge time saver for me so that I can focus more on the creative aspect of it rather than the, the back end aspect of the thing. And so I've created a Patreon in order to allow folks who are interested and able to have an avenue to support the channel so that those other things can continue to expand and I can put all of those resources back into this channel. That's the aim, that's the hope. I'm never going to ask you guys to donate if you are not capable of donating. I, for a long time in my life, did not have any extra cash that I could just freely give to things that I watched. These videos are on YouTube for free for a reason. I want them to be accessible to everybody and anybody who chooses to engage with them. Woodworking is already a hobby that's expensive enough. You don't need to spend any extra money. But if you have the means and you are wanting and able, then head on over to Patreon. I'll leave a link down below and you can support my channel over there. And a preemptive thank you to anybody who chooses to do that. Now also, Many folks continue to ask where I will be teaching, and so in 2024, drum roll, I'm teaching in a handful of different places. Number one, I'll be teaching in June at the Center for Furniture Craftsmanship up in Maine. My alma mater, my alma mater, my alma mater, a place that I love dearly and will continue to go back to teach there year after year if they'll continue to have me. Me and Larissa Huff, my shopmate, are going to be teaching the basics of box design and creation. It is a class we developed over the last few years. It is a tremendous amount of fun, and there'll be a lot of dumb jokes because I can't help myself. That's in June. 
I'm teaching at Mark Adams in Indiana in July. That is a wall hanging cabinet class based on the walnut whiskey cabinet I made during the pandemic. That's gonna be a ton of fun. Also in June, tentatively, but it will get on the schedule eventually. I am teaching at Hatch Space. That is kind of an intro to woodworking class, the very beginning of box making, basic techniques, basic iterations. So that's up in Vermont. If you're interested in being in Vermont in June, which who isn't, then check out Hatch Space and go take that class. And, and there is a potential for an England trip. <laughs> for a UK trip where it may be a very tiny class, but it could be a lot of fun. That is something that is percolating at the moment. So keep your eyes peeled for that if that's a thing that comes to fruition. So that's where I'm teaching in 2024. Now, lastly, the thing that I would ask you all to do is let me know what videos you want to see in 2024. Let's be real, at this point in the video, nobody's watching this who isn't a dedicated fan of the work in the channel, and so I appreciate your eyeballs still being on this video, but it also is a great opportunity for you to articulate what you wanna see in 2024, whether it's a very specific technique video, I already have some on the docket from things that we've talked about this past year, or if there are particular builds that you wanna see, or if you wanna see more of one thing and less of another thing, let me know down in the comments. Drive that algo, you know? Do what, do what the computers want you to do and comment, and uh, I will take them all into consideration. I will make no promises, obviously. Life will play out how it plays out, but I will certainly take them all seriously and consider whether or not I can make those things happen. So friends, that's it. That's the shop update. That's the end of year conclusion to what has been kind of a whirlwind of a year. I'm not gonna lie. A lot of things happened that I didn't expect. A lot of positive things and uh, grateful for every one of them because at the end of the day, I'm doing the thing that I love doing most and even though there are frustrating days and difficult days and tired days because life and work, it's still a beautiful way to live. Thank you for being a supportive component of that life. I'm deeply grateful for that. And I hope you guys get some rest this holiday season, whether you're celebrating Christmas with family or you're celebrating other holidays, whether you enjoy New Year's or you're like me and you're like, New Year's is the dumbest holiday on the calendar. I'd rather be celebrating Arbor Day. Get some rest, enjoy taking some time off, get in the shop if you have the ability and go make a thing, or just take a couple of days and nap. Watch some Christmas movies, sit by the fire, drink some mulled wine. You do you, whatever you gotta do to recoup so that coming into 2024, we're nice and fresh and we can have our creative output back, ready to go by giving ourselves a little bit of a break. It's important. It's important to input so that you can output. So friends, it's been a delight. I appreciate every single one of you. And as always, until next week, cheers. Thank you.